Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you, in which also you stand, through which you are also being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. be seated. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. That ancient Easter greeting has never sounded so good as it does this day. After all, we are living in some pretty dismal times where everything just feels off kilter. Those images we've been watching this week of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing seems to kind of capture the mood of our nation and of this world. An old and outdated bridge, a tanker that's lost its steering, a road construction crew innocently hurled to their deaths in those cold waters, a busy port shut down that now sends these ripples of fear and disruption to the global trade. Things we never imagined happening, happen. And we shake our heads and wonder, like, what on earth is going on? And then to add insult to injury, we can't even talk to each other safely because we are as broken as that bridge. Our polarizing divisions around race and environment and the economics and immigration and speech and sexuality, and schools, and guns, and media, and religion, and oh, don't forget politics, <laughs> make us all afraid to listen, afraid to talk, afraid to debate, afraid to understand, afraid to change. Instead, we become even more entrenched and isolated from one another as we retreat deeper and deeper into our tombs of despair, shrouded in darkness that seems to cover not just us, but this whole wide world these days. Only here's the truth. Here's the truth that we are celebrating this Easter day. In the deep darkness of your life and mine, God is at work. 
God is always doing a new thing. God is always doing what no one believes or even dreams can be done. Your tomb is God's workshop. Your darkness is God's light. God listens to you say, no way, it's never going to happen. And then God responds, oh yeah? Just watch me. God is going to bring you and me back to life as surely as God raises Jesus from the dead. God sets you and me free from the bondage of a Good Friday world where fear and doubt and mistrust hold us hostage. And instead, God gives us a new vision, a new hope, a new reality, a, a new life. God gives us an Easter world where fear no longer rents that permanent home in your heart, where hate no longer nails your enemies to a cross, where faith no longer hides under the crushing, the crushing weight of your own mistrust, where death no longer holds dominion over your life. Don't you, don't you get it? The Easter... Easter is the exclamation point on the ultimate truth that love wins. God's love for us always wins. And as that Roman poet Virgil once wrote, let us too surrender to that love. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Clearly, this is not a day for serious and pious and quiet worship. This is a day, my friends, to raise your arms. Let me see you raise your arms, you as Episcopalians. I know it's a very odd position to be in. This is a day to do that. It, 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 this day should send shivers down your spine, and that kind of extra flutters in your heart. This is a day for harp and for organ and for trumpets and for choir. This is a day for flowers and even more flowers and long, these long processions and crowded parking lots and petting zoos and children. Yes, the voice of children echoing throughout this community. Yes, to their innocence, to their wonder. They have little sticky fingers and chocolate-covered lips. Welcome. Welcome to Easter Day at St. Mark's. We are so blessed to have each one of you here with us at this time. And as, you know, I say every Easter, Merry Christmas <laughs> to our beloved CEOs, our Christmas and Easter onlys. We will see you again on December 24th. <laughs> Make yourself at home and good luck finding the bathrooms at St. Mark's to those of you who are visiting for the first time. Don't worry, as I look around, you will have your pew back next week to those faithful regulars who are sitting somewhere else because someone you don't know is in your pew. We miss seeing you to all of you who are worshiping from around the world, literally on live stream, from Canada to Australia, from Minnesota to Alabama, from Pennsylvania to California, and everywhere in between. And relax, this sermon won't last forever <laughs> to those of you who are here because mom or dad or grandma and grandpa said you're going to church this morning. It's Easter. I get it. Not all of us share my enthusiasm for this day. Your spines may not be tingling and your eyelids already drooping. So to help you out and hold a little tension, I'm going to give you a little story about a teacher who's testing the children in her Sunday school class to see if they understand the concept of getting to heaven. There are not that many Easter jokes, so some of you have heard this before, so I'm sorry. So the Sunday school teacher asks, if I sell my home and my car and I have a big garage sale and I give all of my money to the church, will that get me into heaven? Now nah, the children say. Well, if I clean the church every day and I volunteer all the time and I mow the yard and I keep everything neat and tidy, will that get me into heaven? No, the children, no, that's not going to work. Now the teacher's smiling. She, she actually thinks maybe she's gotten somewhere through these years of Sunday school. Well, then, 
If I'm kind to animals and I give candy to all the children and I love my husband, will that get me into heaven? And again, they answer, no. She is just bursting with pride. Well, then she continues, how am I going to get into heaven? And suddenly an arm shoots up from a little five-year-old boy and he says, you got to be dead. <laughs> of course you have to be dead to go to heaven. And believing that Jesus rose from the dead is as unbelievable this morning as it was that morning Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome carried spices to anoint the dead body of their beloved friend. Sad, somber, sorry, they arrive at that tomb only to notice that that stone, which is big, had been rolled back. And an angel tells them that their friend Jesus, who was crucified, has been raised. Say, what? No way. No how. No wonder they're terrified. It's just nuts. People stay dead. Dead as doornails. You say goodbye to them. You pay your last respects to them and you move on with your life. The best thing you can do is kind of put one foot in front of the next and then you watch the grass grow in the graveyard. Come on. Come on. Clearly, this story is just a, a myth. It's got to be some fake, fraudulent fable read to all of us who just want to try to feel good when we try to survive in the real world, the, the Good Friday world, where the strong win and the weak lose. Those are the rules of the game, after all. Always make the best out of every bad situation by keeping Jesus sealed in that tomb. All we have is Good Friday, which means we don't have to worry about him unsettling us or disturbing us or making more from us than, than what we want to give. After all, Jesus has already turned our world kind of upside down while he was here. Now that he's dead, he's silent. Remember what he said when he was alive? He said, become servants. He said, give yourselves away. He said, turn the other cheek. He said, serve the lame and the weak and the blind and the crippled the outcast, the least, and the lost. If Jesus stays dead, he can't challenge us. He can't try to change us anymore. If Jesus stays dead, we can just keep on living in this Good Friday world, playing it safe, living small lives that require little risk. You know, you know the, you know the formula. You make some good grades, you, you try to get to a great school, you get a good job, you make more money, you invest it wisely, you have a few you know, good friends, you meet a spouse or a partner, you have some children, you sip a few drinks, you travel a bit, you vote for what's best for you, you, you don't worry about anyone else, you give up on the nation, give up on the church. As long as you have food on the table, hey, who cares? It's all about me anyways. Only that's a lie. That is not the truth. Something we never imagine happening happens. That massive stone at the entrance of that tomb is gone. God raises Jesus from the dead. Easter breaks the bondage of time and space. God who creates this world out of nothing is the same God who brings new life to a dead Jesus. Jesus is not resuscitated. Jesus is resurrected. A new creation, a new life, a new love. We forget that God's ways are not our ways. We forget that God is not under our control. Most of us are so burdened and badgered and beleaguered this morning, truth be told, that we have forgot. We have forgotten how good and gracious and surprising is our God. When God brings new life to Jesus, God is also rolling that stone away from your own tomb. Beyond the cruelties of time and beyond sorrow and dying, beyond deathbeds and the crying in the, in the night, a new world, a new world breaks in. Death is never the end of any of us. And that is the Easter world 
to which you have awoken this day, a day filled with the glory of God, the promise of new life, and the love for which we all long to know. Wendell Berry uh, is a, was a Kentucky farmer and a poet, and he wrote a poem about living in an Easter world that I shared with you all, um, I don't know, five or six years ago. I think it's worth repeating. Here's what Barry says our new life through the risen Christ looks like, and these are his words. He says, every day do something that won't compute. Love the Lord. Love the world. Work for nothing. Give and give and give again. Love someone who doesn't deserve it. Ask the questions that have no answers. Laugh. Laugh is immeasurable. <laughs> Be joyful. Be like the fox who makes more tracks than necessary, some of them off in the wrong direction. And then he says, practice resurrection. Wake up. Practice resurrection, my friends. Step out of that tomb that has been opened for you. Take hold of the hand of Jesus who reaches out to you. Follow him. Live as if the Easter world were true. Refuse to be bound by that closed tomb of this world. Stop making excuses for doing nothing. Start doing things boldly. Give yourselves to things that matter. Stand up for those who are always being held down. Give voice to those voices who are always silenced. Help others matter as much as you matter. Simplify your lives so that you can actually be present to your life. Work to make a difference in this world in just these few brief years that you and I are even here. And never, ever, ever forget the Easter truth. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is God's way of declaring that the worst thing that happens to you is never the last thing. The last thing, the last move, the final act always belongs to the Lord of love. And that Lord, that love, cannot die. And remember, when you say to God, no way, never going to happen, God responds, oh yeah, just watch me. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. I'm going to ask you to please stand. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and we're raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your enunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, Keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God, in Jesus you came in the body, flesh of our flesh and bone of our bone, one with us in searing pain and delirious laughter. We thank you that you did not remain an idea, even a religious one, but walked and wept and washed feet with us. By your love, change our ideas, especially our religious ones, into living signs of your work and will, through our lives and by our prayers. Your kingdom come. O risen Lord, who in your first appearance to Mary was mistaken for the gardener, be present with us and show yourself to us in all our mistakes and uncertainties, through our lives and by our prayers. Your kingdom come. Lord God, in Jesus your body was crushed by the cowardly and the powerful. The judgment hall of Pilate knew your silence as surely as your critics knew your voice. In our words and in our silences, take on the powerful of the world today, those whose word sentences some to cruelty and others to unmerited dismissal, those whose word transfers wealth or weapons for the sake of profit or prejudice, and those whose silence condones the injustice they have the power to change. Through our lives and our prayers. Your kingdom come. O risen Lord, as the Spring brings new life to all creation. Water the dryness of our hearts and behold your majesty in nature. 
where we have failed to be good stewards of your creation, bring new life through the work of nature and the work of our collective intent. Through our lives and by our prayers. Your kingdom come. Lord God, in Jesus we see the body of peace, broken yet risen. Ignite our imaginations and unite our wills to heed your call for peace between peoples. Transform us who are complacent or apathetic, that we may become the body of peace, which is the salve to the wounds of violence. We lift, those, we lift up those who serve in uniform, that they may be agents of your peace through our lives and by our pe prayers. Your kingdom come. O risen Lord, your appearance to Thomas reminds us that our wounds can become signs of strength for others. Heal us, Lord Christ. Heal our wounds and let our scars become signs of your great love for the world through our lives and by our prayers. Your kingdom come. Lord God, death has been swallowed up forever in the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Unite us, in, unite us to your son in our deaths that we too may rise with him in the hope of your eternal life. We remember and pray for those who have died recently through our lives and by our prayers. Your kingdom come. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Again, welcome to St. Mark's on this Easter morning. It's good to have you all here. Um, I want to say a, a word of thanks to so many folks in the congregation and on the staff who over the past week have worked really hard to, you know, to, to bring these services uh, to you. If you've been watching on live stream or you were here during the week, it's a much markedly different place than it is this morning, and there's a lot of hands that have helped. So thank you to all of you, whether it's Altar Guild or Flower Guild or folks in the church office. We're so grateful to the musicians here this morning. I think we all owe you a round of applause. <laughs> and, and thank you for your offerings. The list of folks who contribute are what make all of this possible uh, as we celebrate. So thank you for uh, those thanksgivings and memorials that you have offered. A couple other um, announcements just quickly here. I want to highlight um, the Peace Lectures, which begin this Thursday evening in Coleman Hall inside Stalupi. The, it's, uh, the title this year is Race, Religion, and Reconciliation, when we'll explore uh, those intersections, which are a little complicated, those things that I was saying in my sermon we're all kind of afraid to talk about. And to, be, and to be open to, to whatever the Spirit might be doing. And I encourage you to to come on over in the evening from 7 until 8.30 on Thursday evenings in Coleman Hall. It's, it's, there's no charge. And we're welcoming uh, for two weeks Marco um, Michaelis, who was here back in 2015 as part of what was the lectures that that year was the, the Forgiveness Project when folks shared their experiences of, of forgiveness. And he was a former white supremacist up in Milwaukee who did not lead a great life. Uh, and then had a, a kind of a um, conversion experience, and he now dedicates himself to trying to reconcile across religions and races and uh, challenges, and recently uh, was a producer of a documentary called Refuge, 
which is on, it's been on all the Delta flights for the last three or four months. If you go on, like the documentaries, if you're on a Delta, take a look at it. It's called Refuge. And it's the story of a, the head of the KKK up in Northwest Georgia who befriends a Muslim black doctor, immigrant, who's uh, down in Atlanta. And the, living very different lives, but they reconcile and they become friends and they have dedicated their lives to helping overcome all these divisions and to help co congregations and schools and organizations and families be, you know, have, a, have a healthier dialogue about all of that. And so we're excited to have him here on the second Thursday night. He will address anti-Semitism in the culture and what that looks like and what we can do to help battle that. And then the third evening is a, a recent PhD candidate and just received her doctorate from Florida State University. He's also a longtime member, grew up here, you know, was an acolyte, sang in the choir, you know, went to Suncoast High School up at Florida State, got her doctorate in American Religious Studies, and she's going to uh, give a talk on the Episcopal Church and our glorious past in the Confederacy and, and the work of our ancestors, but also in a way of enlightening us to help us figure out how we can continue to move forward. So really interesting, you know, maybe a little challenging in the lectures, but it's part of our commitment as members of the worldwide Anglican community of, community of Nails, Cross of Nails, uh, which is dedicated to peace um, as part of these lectures. So I, I don't mean to belabor it, but I think it's that important for you all to, to pay attention to what's going on and maybe take the opportunity to come on over here. And then finally, uh, thank you to all of you who continue to support the Hearts of Palm uh, Center down in Riviera Beach. We keep uh, chugging along and chugging along. We need another about a million to a million and a half and we'll be able to build this summer. We've raised about four and a half million so far. I'm very grateful to all of you who have contributed. If you have any questions, if you'd like to contribute, I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's a great ministry the congregation is doing that will benefit uh, folks in this community for years to come as well as be an amazing opportunity for all of us at St. Mark's to continually embrace our neighbors uh, in the county that don't live quite, quite like us and look quite like us. So it's a, it's a great opportunity and I, I'm grateful for all of your, your support on behalf of that community. So I think that's good. There's a petting zoo afterwards. Help yourself, go out and enjoy the pet. It's great to have those guys out there. During the offertory, uh, a long-standing Anglican tradition is the flowering of the cross. So, you, you know, we've been doing this every year for years. During the offertory, just come on, children, come on up here. Any child, young, old, will help you put flowers on the cross. So by the end of the offertory, that, that will look fully alive in the beauty of God's creation. So uh, hope you'll do that. And uh, grateful for, your, great for your, your prayers and your interest and uh, for raising your hands in joy to the Lord this day. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Thank you.
And now I invite uh, the children who just fly the cross, come on back up here and you can stand around the altar during the Eucharistic prayer. So come back up. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament 
and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. You may be seated.
And now standing, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into new, newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. And may God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.